In this video, we're going to look at getting ready to have some online music lessons. I've been teaching myself uh, online music lessons for maybe 10 years now, and I've been teaching uh, in a one-to-one -one situation privately for nearly 40 years. I thought it might be uh, useful for me to share some uh, of my experiences with you and help you get set up in the best possible way to enjoy your online music lessons. So we're going to split this video into three parts. The first part will be how you download the app and get that side of things worked out. The second part is going to look at how we can best position ourselves uh, with the uh, device we're using, um, with the instrument we're using. So again, we have the best possible experience there. And then in the third section, I'll do just a little bit of extra stuff which might be useful for teachers if they're looking to get set up uh, doing some online lessons now. Uh, you might find some of those extra details useful yourself if you're a little bit more experienced uh, and want to dive a bit deeper. I'd love it if you would click on that subscription button, give me a thumbs up and click on the notification bell. That'll be your way of saying thank you for this advice. Let's get into it. There are various platforms we can use for online lessons. Um, many people will be already used to FaceTime. Lots of people already using Skype. For me, I found that the Zoom meeting application is actually much better. Uh, it gives us better sound quality. It also, I think, gives us very good picture quality. And from a teacher's point of view, it gives me a huge amount more possibilities that I can learn for a much more immersive online experience. Uh, we'll see some of that later in the video. Now, you can download the Zoom application onto your laptop or mobile device. I want to show you the mobile device app first because for many people, this is probably the most straightforward way of getting set up. So you just need to go to your app store on your device. And then if you find the search button and just type in Zoom here, it will come up and you'll have the Zoom iCloud Meetings app. All you need to do is press the download button and it's going to start downloading straight away for you there. Now, once you've downloaded the app for the first time, you need to go ahead and open it and you should go to the sign up button at the bottom there. Fill in your email address, your first name, your last name and click agree to the terms and conditions and carry on with the procedure there. Now, what you might find is they will ask you to confirm your email address. All you've got to do is go to your email account and there'll be a link there saying activate. And that's it. You're up and running with your iPad or tablet device for your Zoom meetings. OK, so if you are a, a teacher, um, I think you're going to be much better to download the desktop application onto either a PC or a Mac. Uh, you can do this as well if you're a student, because again, there are going to be a few extra little bells and whistles on there. So let's have a look at that. All you need to do here is go to zoom.us. And you'll see over here in the top right hand corner, it says download Zoom client. OK, you can go ahead and do that. It should give you the right version here at the top of the screen, depending on whether you're on PC or Mac, that will download. Now, on uh, a lot of devices, then what you're going to be looking for is your download folder here. It's up here in the top right hand corner. If I double click that now, it's going to start and take me through the installation process for that uh, application uh, on a PC. It's going to be a .exe file in your downloads folder. So follow the on screen on screen instructions. And um, remember, you'll have to give them uh, your uh, email address. You might have to make up your own password. And just as we said earlier, you might get sent uh, a confirmation email that you've got to click activate on. That will activate your copy of Zoom. And again, you're ready to go for your online lessons. 
So we're all signed up for our account and this is what Zoom is going to come up and look like. And the next thing we want to do is make a connection between you and the teacher. Now, if you are a younger student, we would prefer it as teachers, please, if the adults uh, make this connection. So the adult always connects the call first and then we can continue with the lesson. It's just safer for everybody all around. Now, you want to go down to contacts and then you can go up here and add a contact. All you're going to do is add the email address that your teachers sent you and that will create a connection between you and your teacher. When it's time for your lesson, all you need to do is go to your contacts here and touch on the name of the teacher and then it will take you to this screen where you can just say meet. Now that's going to start dialing your teacher and on the other end, he can answer the call. OK, now it might be that your teacher is finishing off the last lesson, in which case you might end up going into a effectively a little virtual waiting room. But hang on in there, because it might be that your teacher's just finishing off the last lesson and, and he or she will be with you as soon as possible. And it all looks very similar on the uh, laptop computer as well. Again, just go to contacts. You can add contact, type in the email address of the person you want to make the contact with and click add and you'll be ready to go. If you want to start your uh, meeting, you can just select from your contacts and dial by pressing meet. This will start off the connection and you'll be all ready and set for your lesson. So now let's just think about how you will set up your room to have your uh, online lesson. So this is a little bit of a checklist, if you like. So number one, I'd say try and make sure you're in a room which is either in the same room as your Wi-Fi router or very close to the room with your Wi-Fi router. If there's one issue with online lessons, it can be that the Wi-Fi signal drops down and then it causes problems with disconnecting. So that's probably one of the most important things. Secondly, again, if you're a younger pupil, the lesson should be in a family room, not in a bedroom anywhere. The next thing is, Make sure that you've got your device powered, either fully charged or plugged into the mains if you can. Again, so we don't get cutouts partway through the lesson. Another thing to consider is the light in the room. Obviously, we need a well lit room. But one thing just to bear in mind is don't have a window right behind you, especially if it's a daytime lesson. That'll generally mean that the camera won't pick up your face so well. A couple of other things that are really going to help. Obviously, you want to make sure you've got your music and your instrument ready in time for your lesson. You will also need to have a pencil. Now, I can't stress this enough. Uh, as a teacher, we're used to just making pencil marks on, on a pupil's uh, music. Uh, we won't be able to do that online. So it's up to you to have the pencil ready so that I can tell you or your teacher can tell you what to write in onto your music. That is really important. Also, with online lessons, we do have a challenge in terms of latency. Uh, if we both tried to clap our hands in time in an online lesson, it would not work, unfortunately. So for more rhythmic parts of the lesson, it's going to be really useful if you can to have a metronome handy. That'll be a better way of your teacher really being able to tell if you're mindful of your pulse and playing your rhythm accurately. Also, we won't be able to have uh, times where we play piano accompaniment at the same time as the online student playing playing the instrument. That just won't work on, on online lessons. Um, so 
Something you can think about is to have another little setup, maybe on your phone with a little Bluetooth speaker if you have it. That would be really useful if you want to do something during your lesson with a backing track. So I might be able to send you a piano accompaniment or something as a teacher, and then you'll be able to play along with that accompaniment and the teacher will be able to hear you play with the accompaniment in real time and that will work because both things are coming out at exactly the same time to the teacher. You'll need to think a little bit carefully as well about where you place the tablet device or your laptop. Now, because of the way the sound works on these things, it's actually a little bit better if you have it quite a distance away from you, maybe about uh, six feet or so. Um, what I find very useful is if I'm reading my music in front of me, then to have this tablet device at about 45 degrees um, to the side is quite useful. And remember, the teacher, if you're playing a clarinet or a saxophone, the teacher's going to want to see basically the whole of the top half of your body, not just your lovely face, because he or she is going to need to see what you're doing with your fingers. The same goes with pianos. Um, now, ideally, we're going to want to see as teachers both you and the instrument so that we can keep an eye on what you're doing with the fingering. Now, I find if you set up a tablet device again on something like a, uh, a music stand, that would be useful because then you can just slightly tilt the device so that we can see the piano and the player at the same time. OK, so just have a little thought about that. Remember the thing about the window. Try not to have that behind you and a, a distance away so that we can see you and the instrument. That would be perfect. So in this final section, let me just show you a few of the extra features that we're going to find useful in the Zoom Meetings app. And this is really the whole reason for using the Zoom Meetings app over any other platform uh, that's currently available. Um, the first one is that there are some useful settings for the sound quality. Now, these are also useful uh, on the end of the student. If they have the laptop version, they can take advantage of this sound setting as well. Let me just show you. It's a really easy thing to set up. You go down to the bottom of your Zoom screen here and click the upward arrow and go to audio settings. OK, now you've got all these different settings here, but we're looking particularly at the audio settings. Uh, you can choose your different inputs here for your sound uh, speaker and your microphone. Now, they're useful as a teacher because if you want to do a bit better setup like mine, uh, I actually use a, um, a DSLR for my main camera and I have an overhead camera for keyboard lessons so I can give, give a very good view of the keyboard as well. I can switch between them. And I can also input a better quality microphone, which I think has a little bit of an advantage as well. But here we go with this um, enhancement to the sound. Go down to the bottom here and press advanced. And you want to make sure you've clicked on this setting here. Show in meeting option to enable original sound from the microphone. Now, I also set the uh, suppress persistent background noise to disable and suppress intermittent background noise to disable as well. So that just means that what you're going to get is, is a, a more true sound. The computer isn't going to keep trying to kind of judge how loud the sound should be and how soft the sh sound should be. That's useful for speech, but not so useful when we're playing instruments. And then when you're in this main screen, and I think this is slightly confusing, using with this app, you need to make sure you do turn on original sound. So when when it says turn off original sound, that means the best setting is is on. I think that's slightly confusing. They ought to change that on this app. OK, and let me show you a couple of other really great things here. As a teacher, I find absolutely indispensable for online tuition. So as I've already said, I can connect a better quality camera and better quality uh, microphones, multiple microphones if I want to, if you've got a, a, an audio interface. 
And um, one of the other great things about this is, oh, by the way, here's my where I can switch for my uh, different cameras. So if I want to show my overhead camera, this is my overhead camera for my uh, piano here. OK, let's carry on. Now, screen share. This is um, really, really fantastic and, and I think absolutely indispensable. We can go to screen share here and screen share is going to actually show us all the things that are open on our screen at the moment. And what we can do is we can share that. So say, for instance, I want to demonstrate something by writing something into Sibelius. Now, Sibelius is going to come up onto the screen and this will come up on the student screen. I can start to write in notes if I want to change rhythms. Uh, I can, you know, do the, all the normal Sibelius things and, and, and um, correct or, or, or change notes or add uh, accidentals to notes. That could be a pre-prepared score. Once I've finished that, I can just stop that as well. The other thing I find really useful is I can share my iPad screen over here. Just press that and press share at the bottom. Now, what this does is it comes up and says it's waiting for your iPad. Now, on the iPad, if you just drag down from the top of the screen and click on screen mirroring, then what you've got there is Zoom on Alistair's MacBook Pro. It'll say your name on yours, of course. Now the student can see my exact score at, at that original size on their iPad or on their laptop. Um, now I'm on my laptop. I'm using the a very well known app called Fourscore. So if I want to, I can even go ahead and start to annotate on that score. And of course, in real time, the student can see what I'm doing as well. So if I want to point out little areas to practice or highlight certain things, I can do that in real time. I'm wire free on my iPad uh, and I've got all my scores on my iPad. Of course, you can send that to the student afterwards uh, as a copy if you'd like to. Uh, the student can even take a screenshot of that and you've already notated it with their fingering or any other options you want to put in there as well. Once you've done, stop sharing. And finally, one little built in feature. There's a nice whiteboard here. So if we wanted to put any text in here uh, or you wanted to, uh, you know, make a little drawing or something, you know, you can um, use that as a kind of whiteboard screen as well. You could even use that iPad screen sharing as a second camera if you wanted to. So, for instance, if you wanted to show a, a close up of a, a fingering or something, or here on the piano, you could demonstrate something where you're showing pedaling technique. You can just prop up the iPad down by the pedal on the piano and uh, use it as a second camera as well. So I find those all really uh, very, very useful for my online teaching. And the students love it, actually. In some ways, some of this is is better than 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 face to face teaching. Uh, and particularly the younger ones, of course, they're so used to having uh, tech around them and, and, and they enjoy all that stuff as well. So thank you for following on this video. I'm sorry if it ended up to be a little bit long. Um, you know, this is a difficult time for uh, musicians as teachers and for students online. Uh, I can tell you that I am extremely grateful for any of my students who are willing to just take a little bit of time to get this set up and ready to go, because obviously this is our income and it means a tremendous amount to us uh, as musicians that we can keep earning an in income even even during difficult times. I hope you managed to get set up. If you've got any advice, uh, please leave a comment down in the comments below. I'd also love to hear your experience with your lessons. Um, you know, if they've gone well or if anything didn't go so well, please share those because I'm sure we can all learn from each other's experience. Please don't forget to do my subscription button and all the very best. Enjoy music. Stay well.